This video is about search algorithms, linear search and binary search. So if we look at linear search first, linear search can be used on an unordered list. So in other words, any list at all, you can do a linear search on. Now, the obvious advantage of this is that you don't need to worry about sorting the list out first. What it's basically going to do is check through each item in the list in order to see if it matches what you're looking for. The algorithm will stop when they find the item that you're looking for. The steps for the linear search are to look at the first item in the list. Sometimes this might be the item that you're looking for, so the algorithm will stop. If it's not what you're looking for, then it'll look at the next item along in the list and you'll repeat steps two and three. So if the next item along is what you're looking for, you stop. If it's not, then you move to the next one. So let's look for the number 96, a pretty famous number that resonates with Liverpool fans. So let's search for the number 96 in this list of data here. Now, this list of data is actually in the correct order, but if you put it in any order whatsoever and it will still work. What we're doing here is we're looking for the number 96. So to display this, to actually write it in the exam, that's the steps that you would write out. So check the first item. Six is not equal to 96, so you check the next item. 22 is not equal to 96, so you check the next item. And you repeat those steps until you check 96 is equal to 96, item found. That will stop the algorithm. So it's obviously a pretty simple algorithm to create the linear search because it's just a simple step that you're repeating over and over again. So the advantages are that it's a simple algorithm and you can use it on any list. It doesn't matter if it's in order or not. The obvious disadvantage is it's very inefficient if you've got a large list. You could potentially end up checking maybe like 200, 300, 10,000 times checking to find the right item that you're looking for. Obviously, this will also mean that it's quite slow unless you get lucky and the first item is the one that you're looking for. So for those of you going for a slightly higher grade, it might help you to understand how to kind of do a written algorithm for this. So we could use a count controlled loop to loop through a list of data. So you'd have a data structure called a list. You'd have all the numbers in it. Then you'd have an input value. So you're asking the user to search for something. So input a search item, something that you're looking for. So in this case, we'd put 96 as our input. Then we start the for loop. So for item in list, that is basically going to start an index value at zero. It's going to start from the first item in the list and check that one first. So if the first item equals search item, then break the loop and print item found. If you are going to not find it with the search one, then it will go to the next iteration of the for loop. So then it will check the second item along and it'll just keep repeating it until item is equal to search item. Next up is a binary search. Now this is obviously a little bit more complicated main thing is that you need the list to be sorted in order for this to work. What you basically do is you find a middle item and compare your item to that item. If your item is greater than it, then you get rid of the whole left-hand side of the list. If it's less than it, then you get rid of the whole right-hand side of the list. So if we look at the steps in an example, it should become quite clear. So the binary search steps are a little bit more complicated. What you have to do is in your ordered list, you find the middle item. If that middle item is what you're looking for, then you would stop the search. If it's not, what you have to do is compare that middle item to what you're looking for. If your item is before the item that you're looking for in the list, then you get rid of the whole second half of the list. If it's after, then you can get rid of the whole first half of the list. And you basically keep repeating steps one to three until you get to your item. When you first see this example, you might think there's a 
lot of information there on the screen, but if you take it slow and start from the top, it's quite easy. So if we're searching for 96, just like we did before, this list is in order. There are nine items in the list. Therefore, we need to work out what the middle item is. There's one little trick you can do to do this. If you add one to the number of items in the list and divide by two, and that should help you to find the middle item in the list. If you get a decimal, then you round up all the time, just like you would in maths. So, if we have 96, we are looking to compare that with our middle item. Our middle item in this list is 65. We've got nine items, we add one and get 10, divide by two, and the middle item is the fifth item. So we compare 96 to 65, and what we notice is that it's greater than it. So we can get rid of all of the items to the left of 65, and including 65, because we know it's not 65 as well. That leaves us with four items left, 90, 96, 107, and 133. If we repeat the steps of the algorithm again, we need to find a middle item. So if you've got four items, you add one, you get five, divide by two, and it's 2.5. Round up, just like you would in maths to get a whole number, you would round up if it's 0.5. So therefore, third item along is what we're looking for. It's 107. So we compare 96 to 107, and it's less than it. So what we've got to do is get rid of 107 and everything to the right of it. So 107 and 133 are now gone. Leaves us with two items. Add one, you get two plus one is three. Divide by two is 1.5, which makes our middle point 96 and 96 is equal to what we're looking for so you stop the algorithm so the main thing to remember here is that you just add one to the number of items and divide by two that gets you your middle item so the advantage of a binary search is it's much quicker sometimes you might be able to find um, the item you're looking for in one go Sometimes it may take a couple of goes, but it's still much quicker, especially if you've got a large list of information. That also makes it more efficient. It needs to only examine a certain amount of data because you've got rid of a half of the data every time you run the algorithm. The disadvantage is obviously your list needs to be in order. Another disadvantage is it's much harder to code. You can think about the linear search algorithm as very simple. To try and code the binary search one is a lot more difficult. So the main thing that people struggle with with these uh, exam questions is they're not really sure how to write the answer out to make sure you get the marks. So they might understand what a binary search is and they might know how to do it, but not really sure how to write out the answer. So if you don't understand yet from looking at the examples we've already seen, this is a, an example question from the sample or specimen material. So what you're basically looking to do here is make it clear that you understand the steps. As long as you do that, you're gonna pick up the marks. So your first mark is coming from basically saying that you know that you're looking at the middle value. So in this particular case, it's quite easy because you've got nine different values, it's easy to know that orange is in the middle. There's four to the left and four to the right. We know that orange is the middle item. If you're worried about figuring out which one it is, you can do the number of items plus one divided by two. So if you do that, that's 10 divided by two is five and orange is the fifth item along. So we need to compare the word to orange. So if you just write that in, you're gonna get a mark. So if I put something like compare orange to zebra or the other way around make it easier that's your first mark then by saying that zebra is greater than orange so we get rid of all data to the left of orange 
what that means by greater than you might be thinking how can it be greater than it's a word is it's further up in the alphabet or further down in the alphabet whichever way you want you want to look at it it's after orange in the alphabet so therefore we get rid of everything before that then what we're doing is we're looking at the remaining data so we know it's not orange so i might actually put that in just to make it even more clear zebra is not orange because sometimes it might be the item that you're looking for zebra is not orange zebra is greater than orange so we get rid of all data to the left of and including orange so we're left with four items so i'm going to say left with sorry type in left with range tent wind and zebra so then you've got to look for the midpoint again now the this particular exam board always says it that it's number of items plus one divided by two so in this particular case we round up all the time so we've got one two three four items add one and divide by two that gives us 2.5 if we round up then we're looking at the third item so we need to compare zebra with wind and then what we're going to do is realize that when uh, zebra is greater than wind so we get rid of all the data again so get rid of all data to the left of and including wind left with zebra and then I'm just going to say item found that's how you do it that's how you would repeat the steps keep doing it keep doing it keep doing it until you get to the correct item and as long as it's clear for the examiner to see that that's what you're doing then you'll get the marks so as long as you compare to the middle item and get rid of either the left or the right depending on whether it's greater than or less than that is going to get you the marks that's the end of the search algorithms video and also the end of algorithms as a chapter